Um, my name is Rogerio Silva, and I'm Game Design Director at Ubisoft Barcelona. Um, and what that means is that I'm in charge of translating the creative direction and vision into the game. Um, I started uh, my journey in video games almost 20 years ago uh, from my own bedroom. Um, at the time, there were no uh, video game courses in my country. Um, so my best option really was to grab games that were coming out with editing tools and then try and modify those games. Um, a good example is uh, Quake and Doom. Uh, I made a lot of levels <laughs> for those games uh, initially. Uh, and that's what really got me started. Um, and I had a really big interest in telling my own stories through games. Uh, and that's what I did with uh, these modifications that, that I made. Um, and at some point, um, the stories that I was creating were very interesting. And my brother joined me and we started our own company, um, which was a bit a bit unusual. Um, but we received uh, funding in Portugal and we, we uh, started our company and we released one game um, that was based on a TV, uh, TV series, um, Floribella. I don't know if, if you ever heard of that. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it was like a Mexican TV soap opera that was adapted in Portugal. Um, and eventually that kind of led me to move uh, to other countries and around Europe. So I, I worked in, um, in the Netherlands for a year. Um, I made a, a game uh, called uh, Fairytale Fights. It was a fighting game, a co-op, four-player co-op uh, fighting game. Um, and then I had an opportunity to move to Ninja Theory uh, where I work for almost uh, five years, initially uh, did Enslaved Odyssey to the West, and then was lucky enough to lead the design for the DLC for that, which was a new playable character. Um, and also uh, Devil May Cry, uh, which I was lucky enough to direct uh, the DLC, which was called uh, Virgil's Downfall. Um, and from there, I've kind of done a few different things. I've I've done um, a, two years of uh, film projects, uh, short films, music videos, because I wanted to learn more about that side um, because it's also relevant for games, cinematic and um, composition and post-production, all of that. Um, then eventually also worked on, on Dead Island 2 at Simo Digital. Uh, for two years, and uh, finally, there was the opportunity to join uh, Ubisoft Barcelona and the Assassin's Creed team, which uh, felt like a huge opportunity to apply all the knowledge that I had, um, and also to build a team around that. Um, and that's been two years ago, and so far, so good. <laughs> So at, at Ubisoft uh, Barcelona, we weren't really involved with um, implementing Easter eggs, but we did implement a secret location. Um, our boss fights, uh, the Daughters of Larian, are their end game challenges, and uh, they're not. Um, uh, you're not forced to to do them in the game, so they're they're considered mysteries. Um, and if you defeat them, there's there's a final uh, secret location uh, that if if you take uh, the items you recover from these bosses, it then unlocks something quite special. Um, so, it the way that works for uh, in terms of letting players know where they are, um, we don't we don't really approach it that way. We want to first make sure that the world is rich. So wherever we, we choose the location, that it's a, a, an interesting location that is probably close enough to other locations that 
players might come across them, um, regardless of their skill level. Um, because really it contributes to that feeling that the world is rich. Um, there's a lot of uh, interesting stories hidden uh, aside from the main quest and the main arc. Uh, uh, so indeed, like if you explore, you feel this huge sense of reward from f for finding these, uh, these locations. Um, we really use uh, the historical setting more as an inspiration um, because for sure we have to make sure that our games are accessible to everyone and that anyone can enjoy them. So um, that is really the starting point. Um, for example, in, in, uh, in some of the content that we made in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, the, the Daughters of Larian, they're inspired uh, by uh, legends, so they're not really in historical books, um, but they felt really appropriate for the fantasy and the mysteries that we wanted to create. Um, so in a sense, um, for, for a Viking warrior, as Eivor is, coming to England, an unknown uh, land, uh, it's very important to have all these myths and, and legends kind of come through your experience. Um, so really, we use it more as an inspiration uh, than anything, but uh, they have to be accessible for, for everyone, uh, including like younger audiences, for sure. So generally in terms of uh, music, it doesn't really, I wouldn't say it drives the gameplay decisions that we make. Uh, I would say gameplay uh, comes first. Um, when we look at creating the ultimate Viking experience, that's really what we're trying to translate uh, into, into the game. Um, but of course, I'm sure everyone on the team has... Uh, use music as inspiration uh, and that helped them uh, be more creative with the project. Uh, but one thing I would say is that music generally comes later in the stages of development of a game. So for a long time, our game won't have music in it and we are creating uh, the environments and the mechanics. Uh, and when they come in, they really um, add a lot to, to the experience. Um, and sometimes maybe they arrive at a stage where they can still inspire us to do something. Um, in the case of the Animus uh, Anomalies that we produced at Ubisoft Barcelona, I remember we did our puzzle levels uh, with no music for a long time. And when the music uh, finally arrived, it really added to the sense of mystery. Um, and at that time, it really helps inspire us to, to go further with everything that we're doing in terms of creating that experience for uh, the player. So yes, for our level design, we have our, our, our editor uh, where we create all the block out uh, layouts for, for our game. So our our process is to first uh, prototype the gameplay that we want. Um, and then once uh, the layout plays well um, and it really delivers on everything that we set out to do, uh, that's when uh, the art team comes in and, and does the art pass um, with the with the appropriate assets and obviously all, all the lighting and VFX and, and all that goes with that. Um, so that's usually the process that, that we follow. But for sure, every game is different um, because the time period uh, is unique to each, uh, to each setting. Um, and also in terms of gameplay, um, there will be different as well because the character will be able to do things uh, that weren't possible in previous games. Um, so uh, with each game, for sure, there's all kinds of new lessons that we have to learn and apply um, that that try and deliver on the on the creative vision for for each of uh, for each of the titles. So 
So as a game uh, design director, is my responsibility to lay out the processes for the design team, and and that also includes um, the game design documentation, either for our level design or for our combat design and enemy design. Um, we follow our own format, um, which is we try to adapt to the project needs as well. Um, but one thing I would say that that might be relevant is that we try and keep our documentation as light as possible. Uh, we actually don't like to add too much detail in our documents. They actually look more like uh, a pitch that you would make, like a creative pitch. So the idea is understood by the team. And then we move to prototype. And this is really where all the detail comes through. Because one thing I personally found with my experience in the industry is that um, if you put too much detail in the documentation and you spend too long working on a document, when you go to prototype, a lot of that document is irrelevant <laughs> because you find new ideas or maybe some things don't work out so well. So we really, we really value documentation that is light but super accurate uh, that that informs the entire team on, on our objectives. Uh, but then it's up to uh, the team and the prototyping stage to really nail all the details of what we're trying to create. So to create um, rich open world experiences like the one um, we delivered in uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, we really have to try and cater to all kinds of players. Uh, so it's, it's not about trying to be everything for all players, but making it okay for players who like action to go in the game and enjoy that, or people that like the story to experience the story at their own pace, or also, also players who enjoy exploration to take their time and enjoy the open world that way. So for us, it's really more about providing a range of experiences that all kinds of player profiles can enjoy. So in order to avoid uh, bottlenecks or, or uh, delays and how we we produce our levels or even our, our game mechanics or our bosses, we have to make sure that the entire team is aligned. So it's really important for us to do um, kickoff meetings where everyone has a chance to, to understand and ask questions about uh, the concept that we're trying to create. Um, and that's really the best way uh, to avoid uh, bottlenecks uh, or or changes is to have a team that's working together and super aligned on what we're trying to achieve. So Assassin's Creed is by design a series that can uh, take players in to many different locations, many different time periods, and we think that's really what makes it interesting for fans of the series because they they never know what to expect next. Um, and with this, for us, it comes uh, great in innovation every time, um, not just in the setting, but also in terms of the gameplay mechanics, because we are trying to create a, a new fantasy for the player. And in, the case of, um, in the case of Assassin's Creed Valhalla, we wanted to create the ultimate Viking experience. Um, so for sure, that keeps it interesting for fans of the series, but also for the team that's working in Assassin's Creed, because for us, it's always different. It always feels like a new game and a new adventure. Um, so it's, it's, it's always exciting. So for anyone looking to uh, start a job in the industry, one of the things I would say is really, really important is to work on your portfolio and really show what you're able to do. Um, and you know, if, 
if your first attempt isn't successful, keep working on, a, on your portfolio, showing more and more examples uh, of what you can achieve. Because for sure, a portfolio is, is the best way you can demonstrate to a potential um, team or, or studio what you're capable of. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, Assassin's Creed uh, as a series is designed to keep fresh uh, as we're always changing to a new setting, offering players new and exciting uh, uh, fantasies. Um, it it kind of has to innovate by design, um, um, which is what's exciting about it. And I think uh, the commercial success that we've seen with Assassin's Creed Valhalla really shows that more and more players uh, are being drawn to, to the Assassin's Creed experience. For sure, when we talk about a new generation of consoles, uh, we look at the technical leaps and what's going to be possible in the future. And for sure, graphics uh, comes along with that. It's it's what people see on the screen, and it's it's one of the easiest ways to judge that leap in technological fidelity. Um, but I think games like uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, who's uh, also coming to, to next generation consoles shows how a good story is still important. Um, for us, uh, creating uh, this game, we really wanted the story to feel like a big mystery for players, uh, where every part uh, of the open world, every activity, every objective is kind of giving you a little piece to solve this bigger mystery um, and really feel that we have created something special with, with the narrative in this game. And, and when you really complete the game, you feel a sense of uh, a big achievement. Um, and me personally, I got, I got chills when I experienced the ending. Um, it's, still, it's still very powerful and very impactful. So for sure, that demonstrates that story is still at, at the heart of um, uh, many games and for sure uh, the Assassin's Creed uh, franchise.